You're listening to Biz Quick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. Biz Quick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the BizQuick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to BizQuick. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And on today's episode, it's just me and Julie. We're going to talk about motivation, what motivates us, and why some people can't seem to get motivated to get things done for their own businesses. Because that's something that we've come across with working with uh, people, just talking with people, networking, etc. Yeah, I it, I think it all comes down to prioritization and, and time management. And no, this is not an advertisement for Time Bomb. I just think it sometimes amazes me at um, how many things small business owners stack on their plates before they re- realize they've got way too much to do and they don't. And then they're in a situation where they don't know how to get out of it. And it's, it's really easy to get overwhelmed when it comes to, to that as well. Because it's, it's one of those things that there's a million things that you need to do to start a business or just keep your business going. And if you don't stop to, do, like, for, for me, I need to stop sometimes and just write it down so I can visually see everything that needs to happen. Because otherwise, yeah, it's easy, like you start working on one thing and then you get pulled in another direction. The next thing you know, you've done 10% of 100 things and got nothing done. Yeah. And, you know, for somebody like you who is motivated by checking things off the list, it is important to finish things, right? Finish things to um, completion. And then you you feel like, okay, I've made some progress. Um, I am a um, very, very scattered at how I approach work. Uh, I don't typically, you know, I make a list. I usually work from a list, but I don't necessarily finish something before I move on to the next thing. And then I sort of circle back and because sometimes I just need more time to think, think it through, especially if I'm working on like a strategy or a plan of some, some nature. But what, um, what are, what are the things that you do when you realize you've got more on your plate than you can handle? Well, I guess the, uh, what, it's prioritizing. It, it's it's understanding like what the dates are, and, and it, you know at some point you you have to ask for help. But the idea is that again, writing for me, writing everything down, and then taking a, you know taking a step back and look at it and seeing, oh crap, I I can't get all of this done. So it's either shift the date or find ways to get it done. I actually thought you were going to say, Julie, I'm a superhuman. I can get everything done. I know. Or, <laughs> or you just start chopping things off. Because like, it, it, it goes back to the whole concept of people are like, oh, I don't want to launch this product until it's perfect or whatever. You're never going to reach perfection. And that's something as I've kind of gotten older. And, and I don't want to say given up because that's not the right. But like you just kind of you're willing to accept things as they are. So yeah. it's not, not like getting upset. Oh, I can't believe that I didn't finish this or that, you know, it, like going back to working in restaurants or whatever that like, I've got a thousand people that are going to need to get that, that need to eat over the next 24 hours. I'm not going to be able to deliver a perfect meal to all of them. But if I can hit 95% like success and like everybody's 95% happy on average or whatever, that's great. You want to strive for a hundred, but you're not, you're just not going to hit it. Like, yeah. Like it's not, it's not possible. I think to one of the things that's become really clear to me, um, since we started SB Pace and that your 95% happiness, right. For your, for your customers reminded me of this. Um, when I, I think we are you and I, and I don't say this to, to brag on us, but I, I think that we, we focus a lot on, on quality and, and always want to deliver, quality and high value to our clients because I just had somebody tell me the other day, um, actually, um, friend of the show, Matt Reese, who, you know, we partner with on a lot of work. I was talking with him and he said to me that he's never really seen anybody in his career who delivers as consistently as we do. Like we don't miss dates. We're very, we deliver with quality. We hold people accountable to our, to their dates, our partners, 
Where we struggle, I think, is holding our clients accountable to their dates. And that's something we definitely need to get better at. And that was sort of the impetus of this conversation is we so frequently have work delayed because the clients can't find the time to do the activities or hit the deliverables that they need to hit. Yeah, and it's a funny conver- or conversation that we had where we were trying to figure out because of that and uh, that where where do where does the line end in terms of like how much we should care about our client's business and that sounds bad at, at on like on the surface but if we we were talking about how we need to set set kind of the tone of if you don't complete x y or z by this date we're not going to do any work until you're done because we've got other things to do like yeah. we can't sit there and drag you along and hold your hand like you need to get your job done and if you're not doing your job that's not our fault Yep. What will help motivate you, we'll remind you, we'll let you know. But again, we're not going to do your job for you. And I think that's probably something that that's a behavior that we learned fairly early on in terms of doing more of the hand holding. And I like to say molly coddling just because it's a word that doesn't get used often it enough. It needs to get used more often. It defi- right. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, but when we didn't have a lot of clients, we had we could spend more time on each client and we could, you know, hand hold and we did more of the calls and um, as a result, I think I, I know I developed some bad habits where, you know, I let clients just crash through boundaries. And so now I'm having to reestablish those with a lot of on each client, like, nope, like I, you, I mean, you can text me at 11 o'clock at night, but I sure as fuck am not answering that text. Right. But that hand holding is something where we don't, I think we both struggle with, with having those really firm conversations with clients to be like, mm, you need to get this done. Yeah. And it, it, it definitely, it builds like a level of dependency where they don't feel like they can get anything done unless we're involved with it. And that's anything. I mean, not just consulting, it's just life in general. If you're constantly, it's the whole teach a man to fish versus give them a fish. Like we need to teach more people how to fish. Cause the one person who we gave a lot of fish to is now talking shit about us apparently. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. In fact, we, we gave that man an ocean of fish. Yes. And um, I guess when we, in the end, switched to holding him accountable by telling him some good behavior that he should practice in the future, yeah. he didn't appreciate that. Yes. But I I know we're going to handle that situation. <laughs> yes. And by we, I mean you. Yes. <laughs> Someone's got a phone call coming their way. Yeah. But <laughs> it... it it's funny because you would think that the the people who own the business or who will be owning the business, you would think that they would, especially if they don't have a business now, like if they're working on something, like I would expect them to be writing us more than we're writing them in terms of saying, hey, can we, can we move this? Can we speed this up? You know, where's this deliverable? Like I'm looking for this, but it's it's not. And so... You know, I wonder if that's like a self-selecting group in terms of the people who, because for me, like I would never hire myself. <laughs> like that's just like crazy. Would you hire me? No. <laughs> uh, like I would not hire, but the, because it's like I know how to to do this, mm-hmm. um, and I know uh, the everything that needs to get done. So I'm not going to like it's like I, I, we provide a service that I don't need, and that's because I'm the type of person that's just going to go out and start doing stuff I'm not really the type to ask for help so if I need to figure things out along the way I will but I'm not going to hire somebody and I don't really need hand holding to get things done and not that we're doing a lot of hand holding it's just that I'm just going to go I don't I don't necessarily want help like I I asked I asked my future restaurant partner today I didn't ask I told it's like here's the things that you need to do, and it just felt weird because I was like, I know he's a perfectly capable of it, and b he needs to be doing things, but for me, I'm like, well, I'll just, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you asked him for some help because, you know, there are things that you could be doing for SB Pace. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, yes. I mean, I am, but I'm not. Right. Right. If you if you can offload some of the restaurant stuff, that means that frees up more time to for me to offload stuff to you. And then for me to just ignore because I'm too busy working on the restaurant. <laughs> yes. Got it. Something we probably should cut all of this out because we don't want our <laughs> clients to think we're too busy for them. No, but 
it, it uh, again, uh, like uh, I don't think that we are too busy, even with the restaurant and everything else that we're doing with all of our courses and, and other services and everything. We're not too busy. And it's kind of almost helpful for us that people aren't all over us saying, hey, work, 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 because it's we're kind of able to push some things not off, but like prioritize a little bit better. Yeah. I, I also think when, so for the people that are starting new businesses, right? Um, like we've been, we're, one of the clients that we're working with has really cool, you know, product coming out and we're going to get her on the show soon. So I'm not going to um, drop her name, but um, she said, she told me over the weekend that, you know, she's so new to this that she doesn't even know what questions to ask. So she doesn't, I think if she knew, what questions to ask or what are all of the things that had to be done. She probably would push back on us and maybe say like, Hey, when is this going to be done? Or when are you going to do this? But because she's so new to start to, you know, launching a business and, ha and having being a small business owner, she just doesn't know. And maybe that's, you know, where the difference comes in between those people that are just launching and they haven't done it before. Because we, we can use Cheryl Devon as an example, right? C3 Specialties. We helped her launch her business. And she never missed a date. She was all over things. But she didn't she didn't push us on things. But we moved fast with her because she moved fast and she hit all of her deliverables. But she really, aside from family stuff, she didn't have anything competing for her time. When we're existing business owners they've got stuff competing for their time all the time. And maybe what we should do is take a quick break and then come back and talk about how existing business owners struggle to, to find the time to do things. Hey everyone. If you're like most entrepreneurs out there, time is not something you ever seem to have enough of. We get it. There are a million things that need your attention, both in business and in your personal life. That's why we created time bomb. This is a self-paced course designed to help you determine what your time is worth and where you should be spending those precious hours every day. Right now, we have an option to buy the bundle, which also includes products designed to help you become more efficient with your time. It's a $70 deal you're getting for only an additional $30. Head on over to sbpace.com to learn more. Time Bomb. Take control of your calendar. Gain control of your life. And we're back. So we're going to keep going about... Uh, the conversation, I'll keep talking about the conversation about people uh, finding the time to make, you know, to get, get things done. And I think we're getting a little bit off topic in terms of like the motivation. Oh yeah, because, that's right. That was our topic. <laughs> yeah. Cause we love to talk about time management, but it's, it, it, I, it's kind of one and the same in terms of the, like that prioritization of what's, you know, what's important in your life and what requires your time drives what you're motivated to do. So you know, some people are, whatever it is, motivated, uh, they prioritize things, family time, going to the gym, uh, relaxing, like the things that you need to do. There's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you have to put things off and you just have to make that, the, that, that, that trade off of, I, I'm not going to get X done because I need to do Y and vice, you know, vice versa. Um, so for, for people, I think that's the, the motivation there is uh, for a lot of people that we've talked to a lot of business owners, it's, um, you know, our potential business owners, like I want to be a business owner. I want to do something like I want to, you know, change my life, but they're not willing to actually change anything. Desire versus motivation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is a big one for small business owners. And, um, you know, we have a lot of conversations along the way with, with small business owners, entrepreneurs who want to, very much want to make changes. They want to grow. They want to, you know, get their business, you know, they want to scale it to, you know, seven figures or go from six to seven figures or, you know, have their first six figure month in sales or whatever it is. They've got these really great goals, but they don't have, they have the desire, but they don't have the motivation to execute on them. And sometimes they just don't know how to do it. Right. I, I think because planning and execution are so, they're just, is innate the right word? They're innate to us. They're like, like instinctual. Yeah. They're instinctual. Right. We just, we just do them. Right. It doesn't ever even occur to me. Like, I don't know how to do something. Right. Like I, if, because if I don't know how to execute on something or I don't know how to plan something, I will research it and figure it out. That's kind of my, my mode. Right. I'm a big researcher, but 
people who can't build a plan and execute on, on it, like that's, it's foreign to me. So maybe that's the thing is that maybe we're unusual in how equipped we are at doing that. And most people just don't have that skill. Uh, I don't, I mean, yes, there, there's definitely those instances. I would say that the, the people don't have that skill, but again, I think it's uh, for, for most people, they don't have the desire to utilize that skill. Because if you were to ask them to create a plan to go on vacation, they could probably come up with a pretty good plan and pretty detailed and, you know, all of that type of stuff. Again, some people, I don't know, throw some stuff in a suitcase, go. But uh, I don't go on vacation. I've never been. <laughs> I don't know even know where to start. Julie, help me. Um, yes. So, I mean, yeah, but with uh, outliers aside, like there, I, I think that everybody could build a plan. Again, it goes back to like business plans for people who are bootstrapping or solopreneurs or, you know, like I don't really need a business plan. And they think that it's, this super detailed, super, it's a couple of hours of work. And it's a couple of hours of work that's going to save you a huge amount of work later. Mm-hmm. But you just need to do it now. And it's, yeah, I don't want to fold my clothes. So I'm just going to put them in a pile on the end of my bed and just pull off the clean ones. You know, and then they just go in the dirty pile. And then, you know, the clean clothes go back in the clean pile, et cetera, et cetera. You know. <laughs> do you do that? Sometimes. No, I fold everything. I hate putting it away. So obviously, uh, oftentimes there's just a stack of... Here's everything folded and ready to put away on top of the dresser. And all I have to do is open up a drawer and move it down. Nice. (laughs) I have a, um, I have a habit of like, oh, I might wear this later. So I like have a chair and I'll just lay stuff on the chair. Like, I think I might wear that later. And then I realize I've got like 20 things that I might wear later. And so I've got to put them all the way. That's my bad habit. It's getting that motivation, and I, I can't remember who it was. We had a, a guest on. I think it was Heather when we were talking about, like, changing your life, the mental uh, health series that we had back in December where it's just those small incremental changes. Like, you don't have to make – like, if you're starting a business, you don't have to list out everything that you need to do right now. I mean, depending on how real it is, you might, but – it's, it's just start doing little things. I need to build a business plan. I need to solidify this. I need to find this person. I need to talk to them. like like chew off those little bits. But even that is a lot for people. So what would you like? What would your advice be to somebody who's having an issue getting motivated, starting a business, or doing something with their career? Because I mean that's you know careers careers in, in general. Because we don't have all business owners on as listeners here. Um, I would. So if they're having trouble knowing where to get started? Get motivated. Get motivated. I, I, I have a goal. I want to make more money. I want to start a business. I, whatever it is, I want to get promoted. and Because uh, we all know those people who are like... Uh, uh, the dreamers, but not the doers? It, uh, yeah. The, oh, like, oh, I want to do this, or I want to change my life, or I'm so tired of my job. I need to find a new one, et cetera, et cetera. And they don't ever do anything about it, like... What yeah. Would you do to well, you know, there's yes, there's a there's a theory. It, this doesn't work for me, but there's a theory that if you like tell people about it, you're more likely to um, complete it or achieve it. I don't. That's not. I'm I'm very like self competitive, right? Like I always want to like beat myself. I want to be a better version of myself today than I was yesterday, which is so cliche and sounds so stupid. I hate even saying that out loud. And you're nodding your head with me, but it's that like I'm not. I'm not competing against you unless you and I have a bet for how many, how much you know revenue I can get in sales in a given month. I'm not competing against you. I'm competing. And even then I'm competing against me. Right. So it's that, um, the ability, like finishing feels really good. Right. So for me, motivation is, um, just like setting a goal. Like this is the goal. And I like, I like, I prefer stretch goals, like goals that I know are going to require more for me to achieve. And I'm likely going to miss, but I'm going to come really close to hitting it. But I think for people to lay, to figure out what the, what it is they want to achieve and then identify what has to go into doing it. Because maybe through that identification of the steps, they'll realize, uh, I don't have the motivation to do this. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this. This is a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Right. And so, you know, but I always think when there's something that I have to do that I don't want to do or that I can't figure out how to get started on, I'm always like, well, the time is going to pass regardless, right? So I can pass it doing this thing that I want to do 
or I can pass it doing something for someone else. So, and I'm usually going to choose myself because I'm selfish. Sure. And the, the, there's always going to be those people out there who want to do more, but just never do. Yes. And uh, whatever. But it, like, I think that, I mean, when it comes down to um, what's uh, the meaning of life, so to speak, or whatever. Uh, are you going to wax philosophic now? A little bit. Or is it when Wayne philosophic? Wax. Wax. Yeah. yeah okay. Wayne, when you're talking about moon cycles here. <laughs> <laughs> I did look up a moon cycle last night because I knew there was a new one starting today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, uh, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to like the whole concept of like like the Buddhist philosophy on on figuring out the meaning of life and happiness and all that, it's it's uh, becoming content with not wanting because the whole concept yeah. of like wanting is. It, it like it, like that desire so it's not like it's being okay with where you are in life and i think for 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 some people it's like i always have to be moving i need to be moving forward and it's not that i you know i constantly want more money more a better career more this that and the other it's like i want to i want to always be moving forward and some people just need to be realize that they just need to be content with i'm cool sitting still yeah and there's nothing wrong with that so two things came to my mind um, the first one is this. I think one of the things that I would definitely tell people who lack motivation or are, you know, needing to find motivation, there's a really good chance that maybe they need to change their their circle, their network, right? Mm -hmm. Like surround yourself with people who are going to help you to propel forward because they're pushing themselves and they push the people around them. I think that's a really good strategy to take. The other thing I would say is this. There's something to be said for people who are constantly doing, right? Because you can't constantly be doing. At some point, you need to rest. You need to sit down. And um, I think there's a there's a theory that if you always have to be doing something, that you're not comfortable just being, just sitting in, you know, your thoughts. And for those who, people who have feelings, their feelings, that you're avoiding something you're running from something there's something that's going on that you don't want to face you aren't ready to face and so i think that's not that's not necessarily healthy either right so we're not promoting the constantly be you know doing 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 and never stop to rest or think or reflect on things but it's more of that you got to figure out what it is that you want most and then build a plan to get there that is to me that's that's important and that is great advice and for anybody who's trying to figure out how to do that i recommend leave your phone at home and just go out in the woods and just sit and just listen don't yes. think just listen and, but be anyway. o and be okay if you cry yeah that's fine too um at the beauty of nature of what the world has provided us anyway that's it for the show we got to get going and i want to thank all of our listeners as always for for listening into the show and if you need any notes about what we talked about i don't know why you would but get motivated go read our show notes uh yeah do you want to thank me no being... you ask this every time and no i don't want to thank you i really feel like you should because i want to thank you because you were a really great co-host today and you you provided some really but here's the question yes. all right we never thank each other when there's guests on. maybe we should no we should <laughs> okay fine. it's implied everybody okay if you, if I don't tell you you sucked, I tell you I mean you're doing a good job. No news is good news. Yes. All right. If you want to connect with us on social media, do it. Just do it. You don't even need our permission. Just go connect with us. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, the Facebook, and we have a YouTube channel. You can also reach us reach out to us on our website. It is svpace.com. No surprise there. And you can subscribe to our pod, possibly, on whatever platform you're listening to this. So do that. Like us and give us a review. We appreciate any and all feedback about what you are hearing on this show. Yeah. You can reach out about topics as well. There is a Contact Us form on our website. And let us know what you want to hear about. And we will do our best to make your deepest desires come true. We have a book. It's the number one bestseller on Amazon. It comes with a companion digital workbook. The book is called Seriously, Now What? A Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness. And if you've already bought it and read it, you should leave us a review because we love feedback. And it was a number one bestseller on Amazon. It is. 
100% true. It's worth noting twice. You didn't say it the first time. I did. No, you didn't. I did. I promise you did. <laughs> I, was, I was keeping track this time. Anyway, that's it for the podcast. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And this was BizQuip. Yeah, BizQuick. Helping motivate small businesses across America. <laughs>